how I got through heartbreak and how you can too. You will get through it. I know it doesn't feel like it right now. I know it literally feels like you are dying and you are depressed and that there's no light at the end of the tunnel and that you're never gonna feel like yourself again. And that you, I just, I know what you're feeling. I mean, some people might not take it as hard as I did. I am not someone that can go through heartbreak. Even like a guy that I dated in the past um, that I had to get over, it wasn't even a real relationship and I still took it really poorly. So if you don't know how to cope with heartbreak, this is the video for you. So keep on watching if you wanna learn how I overcame it. All right, so I wrote down a list so that I didn't forget to cover certain things because I feel like everything's really important and I didn't wanna miss anything. I have so many more tips, but I tried to condense it so that it was just like the key things you need to do. And if you guys want a part two, let me know. Also, if you need a video on everything you're gonna feel during heartbreak and you just want someone to relate to and you just want some reassurance, um, I have another video on the topic, so feel free to check it out. Okay, how to get through heartbreak. Oh my god, I like to say get through heartbreak rather than get over it because you're not really getting over it because I feel like when you say that, it sounds like you're suppressing it. I say you get through it because you are growing through it, you are overcoming it, you are just evolving in general. So everybody needs a major heartbreak in their life. It's some serious character development. Okay, so before even getting to that list, I want you guys to know three things that you absolutely need to do in order to effectively process all of your emotions and get through everything. So there's three key things, okay? That is to eat and drink. That's considered one. You just need to eat, whether it's really protein-dense smoothies or whether it's salads or soups or water, um, you need to eat and drink. Like you need to get something in your body. If you have no appetite, which I didn't, you need to put something in your body because I wasn't eating and it made everything worse and I realized that I could consume smoothies and I was okay, so make sure you're eating. The second thing you have to do is to allow all the feelings to just come. So if you need to cry and you're like mad at yourself for crying, get over it. Cry. Just cry. Like, do not be upset with yourself for crying. Don't be mad at yourself for feeling, no matter how dirty they did you. Like, just let yourself feel everything. Don't suppress any emotions. And the third one is to let your friends and family in. So if people are trying to be there for you, let them be there for you. I'm not saying you need to tell them the entire story of why you broke up because I didn't tell anybody the entire story. I think one person knows about 60 or 50% of the story, but nobody knows everything because I was too hurt to relive it. And I knew that everybody just wanting the gossip and the tea and like, why did you guys break up? That although they were genuine and wanting to be there for me, I knew that like, there was no real reason for them to know everything because I had to relive it when telling them and yeah, they'd get the tea, but after that conversation, I would feel like shit all over again. So why should I do that to myself just so that you know what happened? Like you just, you don't need to know, you just need to be there for me. So my suggestion is unless it helps you by letting it out, um, if you're like me, you don't need to tell anybody why you broke up. You really don't. So now we're going to get to the list of 10 things that you should really do in order to get through heartbreak. And these are all very healthy things. And by doing these things, you're not only getting through the heartbreak and over the situation, you're growing from it and you're evolving. So you're making the best out of what you're going through and becoming a better person. Because some people just like to suppress and get over it. I like to heal myself. And this is ways to heal yourself from this heartbreak and you will feel better, and you will feel better faster than you would if you just like took the easy way out. Not only that, when you feel better, you'll actually feel better. You won't like go back down into a spiral after like all the time that you put into yourself. So just know that it might not sound easy when you're hearing certain things, but I'm telling you like this is what's gonna do it for you. These are mostly in order. The first one is you need to mourn. You need to mourn. And I know it sounds dramatic because Heartbreak is a breakup, right? For the most part, um, mourning, you kind of associate with death. To be honest, like a heartbreak can feel like someone died. It really can. Because if you think about it, you are so close to someone and then you just instantly cut off all communication with this person. But you know that they still exist. So it hurts even more sometimes because you're like, I can't talk to you, but I want to do that so bad. And I, I, I can't access you the ways that I used to be able to access you. And that hurts because it literally feels like someone died. So you need to mourn this. You literally need to go through some stages of grief. So I'm gonna put this screenshot here of some stages of grief that is going to help you outline what you're feeling. And um, it, it's just a, I would screenshot it if I were you because it's a nice way to kind of keep track of what you're going through and understand that it's normal, it's healthy, and there's a reason behind it. 
So when I say mourn, I mean you need to take all your feelings and accept them for what they are and allow yourself to just go through them. So this could mean depression, this could mean you staring at a wall for 26 hours, this could mean crying for 19 hours, sobbing like a baby. Um, this could mean anything and just accepting it. My morning phase, there was a lot of Janae Aiko. Um, I remember I played Wasted Love, Triggered, None of Your Concern, like the worst, all of her heartbreak songs. Janae Aiko is a lifesaver throughout a heartbreak. Um, there, I have a playlist. If anybody's interested in my, <laughs> my Wallow playlist, let me know and I'll put it in the, in the comments eventually if you guys are interested. Um, but wallowing is just crying and being a baby and not judging yourself for it. This is important. This is the first stage you're going to have to go through. You need to take all the feelings. If you need to spend a week in bed crying and choking on your tears and sleeping with Kleenex boxes under your pillow, do it because that's what I did. <laughs> Number two. This one is the most important one, probably one of the most important. You cannot skip this step. You need to delete them out of your life which means in the physical world and in the digital world so you need to go on instagram and either unfollow them or if you guys ended on good terms like in my situation we had mute them i muted him on instagram on facebook on snapchat on twitter on everything i turned my notifications off on his youtube like when i tell you i muted the shit out of him according to me and my phone and my instagram he wasn't even on the app. I didn't see anything to do with him. Not only did I mute him, I muted all of his friends and all of our mutual friends that I followed. So even if I was very close to someone, I would tell them like, listen, like, sorry, you can take personally, but I won't be really looking at your stuff like that anymore because I don't want to see you share his content, repost his photos, or tag him in something because you guys are out together. Like I, I said, fuck that. Let me just mute them all before I'm triggered. Because the thing is, if you don't mute them or delete them, you are going to go on Instagram one day and you might be having a good day for the first time in six days and then all of a sudden you see their face on your timeline smiling or all of a sudden a bunch of friends are out and they're in the background talking to someone and now you're thinking what if this what if that what does this mean what is he doing I miss him like and now your day's ruined avoid all that and just mute his ass trust me by the way guys I'm gonna keep saying him he his because my experience was with the male um, hopefully you don't take that personally or anything. Of course, everybody has their own pronouns. Everybody's in a different type of relationship. I will be saying he because I'm talking about my experience and it's personal to me. So it just comes out naturally. But obviously I'm very aware that there are so many different types of people watching this video. So like I said, you need to delete them off Instagram or mute or whatever, like all that stuff. Another thing you need to do is you need to go on your phone and delete all the pictures. I couldn't do that because I have attachment issues and I like to look back at my past years later when I'm healed and stuff. So I just hid all my images. I put them all on a hard drive and I named the hard drive folder heal and I just never looked at it. Um, you can do that. You can hide them on your iPhone. There's a feature you can delete them. Uh, there's so many different things you can do. And then lastly, you need to get rid of their stuff. Whether that means you put it all in a box and you shove it at the back of your closet and you cover it with a blanket and you don't look at it. Whether it means you leave it at your parents' house in the basement, buried deep and stuff. Whether it means you burn it. Whether it means you send it to his house and you give it to him, you mail it to him so that you never have to see him. Depending on your situation. If he cheated on you, I say you burn it. Um, you choose what's best for you, but you need to get it out of your sight. You can't be going around and seeing things that remind you of him. For example, I had a robe that I left at his house all the time. So that was like my my house robe for his house. When we broke up, he gave me the robe back. Did I want to wear that robe? Hell no. What did I do? I gave it to my cousin. I said, here, I'm going to throw this out. Do you want it? And she took it. Get rid of things. Even if it's not his, it just reminds you of him. Get rid of it. Trust me. Number three, create a routine that's going to keep you on track with something. Obviously, day one, <laughs> you're not falling into a routine. The only routine you're falling into is staring at the wall for eight hours, crying, starving yourself. I'm sorry if that was triggering to anybody, but that's what I did, unfortunately. Um, only because I didn't have an appetite. Um, things like that, sleeping, crying, those are your routine, right? After that week is over, I'm telling you, the, the second week gets easier, I promise you. That first, oh, the first week, bitch, that week is so painful. You literally feel like numb. You feel like, it feels terrible, but anyways, um, after you've kind of wallowed and mourned for like a week or two, whatever it takes for you, try and create a routine. My routine I actually have on my channel when I was like peak of my depression 
January, I posted a video called Self Love Ritual. I created a self love ritual for myself because it's literally what kept me going. I did this in the morning and nighttime. Every single day I dedicated that time to myself because A, I felt like I deserved it. B, it just gave me something to do. Because at that time I was obviously working from home, I still am, and I lived alone and I was just alone all the time. So I needed something to get me through the day. So my routine consisted of like rubbing lavender oil on my body and meditating and drinking cacao and journaling, all of that stuff, like just a lot of healing, spiritual stuff, that's my routine. Your routine can be something else, whether it's an hour long shower, deep condition your hair and write three things you love about yourself. Like create a routine for yourself, preferably self care one, self love one, but you just gotta do something that's gonna get you through the day and you'll look forward to it in a way. You might be depressed, but part of you is like, oh, I can't wait for it to be nighttime so I can just do it and go to bed. So find a routine that's for you. And I'm telling you, it can be anything. It can literally be reading a book for an hour every night or going on a live stream every night. Like just find something for you. Number four, this one really helped me. And if you're watching this video, you're already doing it. Consume either meaningful or meaningless content. Not really in between, I would stay away from that. Okay, so let me explain to you what I mean because that probably sounds very contradictory. Meaningful content is content that's going to get you through this time. So this video is meaningful content because you're trying to get through heartbreak. I watched about 100 to 200 videos on getting through heartbreak, loving yourself, building confidence, why it didn't work out, all the things that fucked up my relationship that I did. Like for example, I was kind of selfish, I was a hypocrite, I made assumptions, so I watched videos on how to be a selfless person, how to stop making assumptions and taking things personally. I watched all these self-care videos. Like I was consuming meaningful content like 60% of the time because I wanted to help myself, I wanted to heal myself. I'd watch meditation videos, I would listen to guided meditations, I would listen to healing heart frequencies throughout the background of what I was doing, which by the way, it's playing in this video, you probably can't hear it, but there are healing heart frequencies playing in the background of this video so that you're getting healed while you're watching this. Um, but something I suggest is literally doing like an Archangel Raphael guided meditation, healing heart meditation. Those things help me so much. Or just putting six hour long YouTube um, freaking playlist of healing heart frequencies. That's meaningful content. Meaningless content is the complete opposite, which is, it is what it sounds like. Um, something that got me through it, or at least helped me not cry, was TikTok. Just dumbass content, dumbass content. Funny videos, the only thing that could make me laugh was pretty much TikTok and dumb childhood shows that I would watch. So for example, Victorious, I started Victorious from start to finish and I watched that. That's a Raven, I watched that in full as well. Um, random shows, like Disney Plus was my best friend. I, I rewatched like all of High School Musical, Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, A Cinderella Story. Like I watched meaningless content, stuff that I could just sit there and stare at the screen and feel numb inside, but at least I'm just watching something. And it's the only thing I could really like kind of focus on. Sometimes I would find myself like staring through the screen, but at least I would laugh every now and then because when I tell you <laughs> Victoria's and That's a Raven are still funny when you're 25 years old, I mean it. Um, and then, yeah, TikTok, so meaningless or meaningful content is really important and helpful. Find a mindless hobby. My mindless hobby was, um, what was it? Oh my god, oh, it was coloring, using a coloring book, and painting, and learning TikTok dances and never posting them. Um, a mindless hobby is something that you don't have to really think about. So like when you're journaling or when you're writing, you have to think about that. Or when you're sewing, you have to think about what you're doing. But when you're just freestyle painting or coloring a coloring book, things like that, you're not really thinking, you're just keeping your mind focused on something small. You know, like something that's just, you, you, that you can put down at any second and it's, it's not gonna be anything wrong with that. Um, so find something mindless for you to do when you're tired of staring at your phone, you're tired of watching shows and you just need something to do. I loved painting, I would paint a lot. And um, yeah, just buy a coloring book, print one out. Um, you can maybe find a computer game, just mindless hobbies that you just don't have to think about. I would stay away from technology though, to be honest. If you can, stay away. This one's really important. Once you're kind of in a better place after a couple weeks, when you are able to think a little clearer, make a list of all the reasons why you broke up and look at it when you miss him or you miss the relationship. So 
things that he fucked up on or things that you fucked up on or reasons why you just weren't compatible write them all down especially the ones that shit on him i'm sorry to your ex but you're healing yourself right now and if you need to like see him for who he is then do it because it's going to help you trust me if he was a toxic person write down all the toxic things he did that he would always do consistently and when you start missing him and you start thinking about all the good times it's so easy to be sad and just think about all the good but there's a reason you broke up so when you start thinking about all the good and the cuddles and the this and the that oh my god i miss him read the list i know you don't want to kill the dream and the fantasy of what you felt like you truly had with that person but you have to because at the end of the day if that was a true reality and if you guys were meant for each other and you know you guys would be together so you need to look at this list when you miss him and if it makes you cry it makes you cry and read all the reasons why you didn't work out did he cheat on you did he make you feel bad about yourself were you a terrible person to him were you guys toxic write them all down and just read it and let yourself remember all the bad because it will hurt but you need to remember that there was bad and this will help you heal because if you keep living in a fantasy that didn't really exist you're gonna stay in that place and you're always gonna miss this relationship and that doesn't make sense for you in your journey. Another list you need to make along with that is a list of all the things that you learned about yourself through this relationship and like what it taught you. So like I said, it taught me certain bad traits about myself but it also taught me good things and what he taught me and what everything I experienced with him taught me. Write a list of that too so that you can kind of see the breakup as something positive in a way and you can remind yourself that like, okay, this is for the best, this is for the best, this is for the best. This one I probably should have put a little sooner on the list, but you need to change his name on your phone. Because iPhone does this little thing that when you send a message to someone, let's say an attachment, it'll suggest like three people you talk to the most to send it to, and you're going to see his name on your phone like every fucking day. Things like that, or like when you're looking at your contacts and you scroll down to find something, you see his name over and over again from when you guys used to talk every day, or like, when someone texts you and there's a similar emoji to his name, like you're going to think it's him, your heart's going to stop for a second. You need to change his name on your phone ASAP. This probably should have been like day one that I said this, but do it. Do it. What I changed his name to was you're okay with a little peace sign to remind myself that I'm okay. That if I see that name for a second, if I see, you know, something to do with him, I see you're okay. My heart might like kind of go like stop for half a sec, but in a second I'm reminded you're okay, Ashley and that helped me because i remember it had been months of no contact and he reached out to me and my heart literally sunk and then it said you're okay and i was like and then i took in that it said you're okay and i was like, okay i'm okay i'm okay and i answered the phone and i was okay so change his name another one speaking of no contact you need to do no contact you need to do no contact i don't care if you think you guys are going to get back together and you want to keep him around you broke up for a reason so let yourself heal and if you're meant to come back together the universe will take care of that and will bring you back together naturally which is what happened with me it's literally i'm talking about this heartbreak but i healed from this heartbreak i got over everything i overcame it and i got through it i grew i evolved i became a whole new person and then what happened the universe naturally put us back in each other's paths and we got back together so the universe will do its thing if it's meant to be trust me i promise you that it will do its thing but part of it doing its thing you guys need to heal from each other and you won't do that until you do no contact when we had broken up we did not speak we did not text we did not comment on each other's posts we did not like each other's posts we didn't watch each other's stories i muted him but he also muted me because i stopped like seeing his little um viewer in my story and eventually like i was like okay like yeah he muted me so i stopped looking for his icon for views on story um we didn't call each other we didn't see each other if I knew he was going to be somewhere, I avoided it. Like, we did not speak. And do you know how much this helped? So much. This one, I'll say it once. You can listen to me or you cannot. Do not drink. Do not consume mind-altering substances. And don't caffeinate after, like, 4 p.m. I, one time, I thought I was okay. I thought I was healed. And somebody got me a bottle of champagne for my birthday. And we drank most of it, all of us, for my birthday, and I was fine because I was with like a group. We were happy vibe. It was fine. Know your environment if you are gonna drink. Know the people you're around. Just be, make sure you're okay. Don't drink alone. 
Anyway, so I had one cup of champagne left the next day after all the girls were gone. I had just finished cleaning my apartment and I saw the bottle. I'm like, if I don't drink this today, it's gonna go flat and throw it out. I may, I may as well just have one cup of champagne by myself and there's no alcohol left in this house. So I'm just gonna end up like just chilling after, right? Wrong, I had the glass of champagne and I hadn't eaten all day and it really hit me and I fell into a like spiral of depression and I ended up looking at his Instagram for the first time in months because I didn't creep his Instagram at all. I never did because I knew it would hurt. So I creeped his Instagram for the first time in months and everything just hurt me. Like he had a new, a new jacket and I was like, what the fuck? Like there was new people in his pictures. And I was like, huh? Um, like I just saw stuff that I, would, I just didn't know about and seeing him live a life that I didn't know about was just new to me because I knew everything about this person. I knew his date. I knew what he would be doing every day. I knew who he was seeing, I knew all his friends, and now I'm seeing people I've never met before. I'm seeing like new shirts, new hats. What's going on? Like you're still a person without me, what? And like as stupid as it sounds, it hurt. I started crying and on top of that, like his bio said that he was like going on a little trip soon. This is before Corona and um, it fucking hurt. Like I'm like a trip? What? Like who are you going with? Like cause it said like the dates he was going on the trip cause he's a photographer. And I guess he wanted to like shoot people down there. And I was like, oh wow, so now he's gonna go meet new models and he's gonna do this and he's gonna do that. And, that. and I started bawling my eyes out. Like when I tell you, I literally like was like this, like drunk, just scrolling, crying, 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 like bawling my eyes out, put the phone down and just fell into a depression and started bawling, like crying for two hours. And it was terrible and I was drunk. And the next day I looked back and I was like, that would not have happened if I was sober. And I did not touch alcohol again for a while. It was, it was just bad. Um, I didn't drink alone. To this day, I, I just like got into the habit of not drinking alone because I used to have a glass of wine after I cleaned. Um, I'm just in the habit now. I can do it if I want to, but I just don't drink alone anymore because I just don't think it's healthy. So don't do it. Um, caffeine after four, honestly, you're a mess right now, most likely. You're probably having sleeping problems. I know you think your cup of coffee at 4 p.m., even 3 p.m. is not gonna do anything to you, but I'm telling you, if you do not caffeinate, your sleep will be better. I was not drinking coffee for a while because I was not sleeping. I just had chamomile tea, that's it. Okay, so the next thing, we're almost done. This one really helps me. If you don't wanna do it, don't. It's not necessary, but document your progress. Um, I did this by journaling and by making videos. Day two of my breakup, I sat down and filmed everything I was feeling. Day five, I did that. Week one, week two, week three, week fucking 26, whatever it was. I don't even know if it, anyways. I fucking documented every single thing I was feeling, when I felt better, when I felt worse, when I slumped back into depression, when I felt like myself again, when I felt like a bad bitch, when I, whatever I was feeling, I documented it either on my iPhone or on my MacBook, and I would just talk about what I'm going through, why I'm crying, I would cry in the videos. They're only for me, so I was very vulnerable, and after like two months, I would look at the week one footage and I'd be like, wow, I've come a long way. I don't know that person right now. I've healed. I've really healed. And it pushes you to keep going. So like when you look back at your progress, you start realizing this is going to get better. And you see the light at the end of the tunnel. You may not feel it, but you see it. And you're like, okay, let me keep healing myself because whatever I'm doing is working. And you put more work into yourself when you document and look back on it. You can journal. I did that too. Like two to three times a day, I would be journaling. So write down your progress, what you're feeling. I'm telling you, like when I look at my week one journal entries versus my week 10, whole different person. Like week one is like some sappy, emotional, I just miss his touch, I miss this, and I just want to blah, blah, blah. Week 10 is like, I'm healing myself, I'm growing, I ate today, I showered, I feel good, like more about me, you know? And I started to see the difference and I'm like, this is working, I'm getting better, I'm healing, I'm evolving. I'm telling you, document your progress. Trust me. And if you guys want a montage of me on week one to whatever, let me know because I can put it all together. I'm gonna edit some little pieces out because it's real vulnerable, but I mean, I'm okay with putting it on the internet if it's gonna heal people. So let me know if you wanna see my progress because maybe it'll help you keep on track. Maybe it'll help you see what you're, you're gonna expect, all those things, I don't know. Just let me know if you want that and I can piece it together. I have so much footage, <laughs> so much footage. Almost the last one, two more. Redefine everything. What does that mean? Okay, let me give you an example. I remember the day before we broke up. 
We spent about two hours on Queen Street downtown and we popped in at these furniture stores and we went to this spa place and we went here and we went there and we just like went to this area and we had so much fun together. And the next day we broke up and it was like, what? You know what? I think we broke up that night. Um, so anyways, <laughs> the next time I went to that area, I was walking and I was like, oh my God, oh my God. My heart sunk because I realized where it was. And I started tearing up and I was like, okay, let me redefine. I was with someone at the time, she was guiding me through, she's like, redefine everything here. You give it new meaning, you give it new memories, you associate new memories to this feeling, to this place, to this song, to this meal, whatever it may be. Pho, that was our food. We always had pho together. I couldn't eat pho until like a month and a half after the breakup and I love that fucking food. It's so good, so good. So I went for pho by myself for the first time since the breakup, um, maybe a month and a half, maybe two months in, and I teared up, and then I redefined it. I put on my favorite song, I sat there, I looked around, I created a new visual memory of what I associate with pho, and I literally just redefined everything. My new spot, my new this. I tried something different. Like, I just created a new memory so that I won't go for pho and get depressed every time. Um, one thing I'll say that you probably won't be able to redefine is his car, the car that he drove. It, that, <laughs> that's gonna take a while. Um, but like, I'm telling you, you can give new meanings to people, places, things, foods, whatever, songs. Just redefine it all. Listen to your favorite song that you had together when you're ready and do something cool while you're listening to it. So you think of that moment when you hear it. Quick little memory. I remember um, the song While We're Young by Janae Echo, my favorite song. And it was like a song that I felt, I don't know, like it, just, it was him and I to me. And I had an early memory of our relationship to that song. And like, if I can hurt, I, that's my favorite song. And I couldn't listen to it. So one day in January, um, I went to Lakeshore with my little cat. He was a little kitten at the time. He's dead now, which was sad. He died during my heartbreak, by the way. Um, I took my little kitten and I brought my journal and I brought my AirPods and I listened to the song over and over again while journaling about what I'm feeling. I redefined the moment and I just looked at everything around me and now every time I think about that song, I think about that moment. And I think about my kitten and my journal and the waves of the water and the cool air and lakeshore, so yeah. Bonus, this is the last one. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with yourself. This is all a process. You are going through it. You're going to evolve. You're going to come out stronger. Trust me, you're going to come out stronger. You're probably going to come out a whole new person if you allow yourself to evolve that way. Be patient with yourself. This is not going to happen overnight. H how long is it going to take, you might be wondering. That, <laughs> it really depends on you and what you do. If you follow this, this book here, this video, everything I wrote, I'm telling you, in three months, I felt like myself again. Month one, a shit show. Uh, an absolute shit show. Month two, I was crying definitely daily, but I wasn't bawling my eyes out anymore. I was tearing up, I was frustrated, I was asking like, why did this happen? Like, I was, I was tearing up more than anything. Um, and then but the, like towards the end of month two, I wasn't crying every day anymore. I was crying every other day. Month three, I was crying every few days, way less tears. I felt like a human being. Month four, I wasn't crying that much. I was like, maybe like a weekly thing. Um, maybe once every week and a half. I wasn't angry at him. I wasn't thinking about him every morning in the sense of like expecting a text. I wasn't checking my phone and hoping he would message me saying, like, let's get back together. Like I was, I felt like myself. I was able to enjoy things again. I was able to eat my favorite foods and enjoy them. I was able to go out and genuinely enjoy my time out with my friends without like feeling sad the entire time. Was I still thinking about him every single day? Absolutely, 100%. But it was just a thought at this point. It wasn't a thought that I sat with and cried over. It was just a passing thought. But I definitely thought about him all the time. I won't, I won't lie to you. Um, month four, I felt like myself. I still thought of him daily, but I was not getting sad over it. I was healed. I, I was healed. Like, I think that's when I was healed. But I definitely was still a little bit vulnerable at times. And if 
I, but you know what? I'm, a month four, I was able to look back at our memories and smile and like laugh and like tell stories about dumb shit that used to happen and like laugh at it and not feel heartbroken and, and sad that like um, that like we weren't together anymore. I'd be able to be like, you were so fucking dumb. Like this is what happened because we ended on good terms. Um, and yeah, like I wasn't like I wasn't hurting anymore, but I was definitely still thinking about him. Um, yeah, month five. It, it, went, it went up from there. It went up and then we got back together eventually. But we didn't get back together until I was healed. And that is the key. If you're getting back with your ex, wait until you're healed. Do not do it while you're still vulnerable and heartbroken and feel like you need him. Because it will end bad, I'm telling you. You need to heal yourself. You need to understand that you are enough on your own. You are all that you need. You are whole without him. You are not each other's half. You are whole. And he adds value to your life. You need to understand and truly believe all those things before you can get back together. You need to get over him. Sorry. Get through the breakup. And then consider getting back together. Um, but yeah. Oh my god, the list is over. I'm sorry this video is so long. I have so many more tips. If you need more tips, let me know. Because I went the fuck through it. It was awful. I'm not going to lie to you. But I'm alive. I'm here. I got through it. So <sighs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, um... I don't know. I'm not even going to say thumbs up. Just share your experience down below with your heartbreak. What stage are you on? What process are you going through right now? What are you feeling right now? Are you fresh into the breakup? It's been one day. Are you healing? Has it been two months? Where are you in your journey and what are you going through and how are you feeling? Let's all share that in the comments so that whoever's going through it can read it and gain clarity, reassurance. Maybe they'll get some um, insight on what to expect in a few months coming up, you know? Just share your experience down below. But that's all for today. I hope you kind of enjoyed it. I don't know, we're probably going through it, so I don't think you enjoyed it. But yeah, that's it. I don't know what day this is a vlogmas, but it's something. Let's keep it going. I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.